The burnt offering or the whole offering connects Genesis 22, offering of Isaac, long before the law, long before the law was given. So it's, it's beyond the law. But so look at it. What is, happens in Genesis 22? Abraham, you have Abraham and you have his son Isaac. Abraham means what? Father. So what do you have? You have a picture of something cosmic. You have a father and you have a son. You have the Father, God, and the Son. It says to Abraham, take your beloved son, your only son whom you love, take your beloved son. So it is written that God took his only begotten son. What happens in Genesis 22? The Father offers his son. What happens in salvation? The Father offers his son. As what? What does Abraham offer Isaac? As a sacrifice. See, see, if you're just reading this and the world reads it, oh, this is wrong. God's saying, oh, God wasn't, wasn't ever going to want Isaac to be offered. But notice what's happening. It's a prophecy. What happens? Only God could put this together. The father takes the son, Abraham takes Isaac, and puts him on a donkey. So the father God takes the son of God and puts him on a donkey. The father brings, the father Abraham brings Isaac on a donkey to the place of the sacrifice. The father God brings the son of God on a donkey to the place of sacrifice, to Jerusalem. The son Isaac submits to the father as he walks to the sacrifice. So the son of God submits to God the father to go to the place of sacrifice. The father, Abraham, then, notice what he does. He takes the, the wood of the sacrifice and places it on Isaac. So God the father takes the, the wood of the sacrifice, the cross beam, and places it on the son, Messiah, to bear it. So Isaac bears the wood of the sacrifice to the place, and so the son of God bears the wood of the sacrifice to the place of the sacrifice. The father then does what? What does Abraham do? He binds the son to the wood. So what does the father do? He binds his son to the wood. Do you know there's an ancient Jewish writing of the rabbis that speak of Genesis 22, this? And you know what they say, the rabbis say? Without knowing it. They said, Isaac carried his wood as a man carries his cross. The father, Abraham, then offers up his son as a sacrificial lamb, offers him up. The father, God, lifts up his son to become the lamb of God. The father, Abraham, lifts up the knife over his son for judgment, for piercing. But at just that moment, it all stops. God says, don't lay a hand on the, on the boy. He says, because you have done this, Abraham, you have not withheld your son. So basically he's saying the covenant is sealed between us. He says, I swear by myself, says God, because you have done this, the covenant is sealed. But with a covenant, what one party does, the other party has to, be, has to do or be willing to do. So if Abraham is willing to offer up his son, God the Father has to be willing to offer up his son. And it's amazing because he's going to offer up his son through Messiah. Messiah is the son of God and he's also going to become the son of Abraham. He's going to be the descendant of Isaac. So it's all together. It becomes one. God and Abraham, they're joining together. If Abraham is willing to put his son on a donkey, God's going to put his son on a donkey. If Abraham's going to put the wood on his shoulder, God's going to put the wood on the shoulder of his son. And if Abraham's going to bind his son, so God is going to bind his son. But where it stops, Abraham lifts up the knife, but God says, no, and you know, Abraham, interesting, because you know, what does it say about Abraham? What does he tell the, tell the people who are with him? He says, I and, my, and the boy are going up, but we're coming back to you. How, how is that? Well, Abraham believed the word of God. God said that I'm going to make you a great nation through Isaac. So if he's telling he's going to offer up Isaac, 
That means he's, he believes that God has the power to raise him up. And that's exactly what is said in the Bible, in the New Testament. God would do it. And so it both would be the Son of God and the Son of Abraham, except now the Son of God, there's going to be no stopping when the judgment comes upon him. There's going to be no stopping when the nails are getting ready to go. So Isaac wasn't pierced, but the Son of God is going to be pierced. God is going to go farther than Abraham. Abraham, you know, when, when, when he was there, Isaac said to him, Father, where is the lamb for the Ola, the, the sacrifice for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God will provide himself the lamb. God will. Amazing. God's going to provide a lamb. Interesting. So what is Abraham thinking? Because Abraham thinking he's going to have to offer up Isaac, but he's saying that God is going to provide a lamb. The lamb. And God says to Abraham, by myself I have sworn. What does that mean? When you swear by something, you're offering it up. You're lifting it up. Collateral. Pledge. So if God swears by himself, what does that mean? It means God is going to offer up himself as the Lamb. Messiah, Son of God, Son of Abraham. And where did the sacrifice or the offering of Isaac, where did it take place? The Bible says it was on, I will take you to the land of what? Moriah on one of the mountains there. Mountain, there's a mountain there called Mount Moriah. Where? What is Mount Moriah? Mount Moriah is Jerusalem. So on the same mountain, on that mountain where Abraham was going to offer up his, his son as a, bur, as a, as a ola, and a burnt offering, same mountain, they build the temple on that place and they offer up sacrifices for, for a thousand years. They're offering up sacrifices. It all came from that first sacrifice there, which was Isaac. But that sacrifice was speaking of another sacrifice that was going to come. So the temple's kind of in between these two events. It's kind of keeping the ground. They're offering up all these sacrifices. It's ultimately about the one sacrifice that gonna, that's going to come there. What did Moses, who's writing this account? Moses is. And what does he write? Moses writes, therefore Abraham called the name of that place Yahweh Yirah or Jehovah Jireh. Which means what? The Lord will provide. What? It says it right there. What? He said the Lord will provide what? The Lamb. So what does it mean? It means the prophecy is, Moses writes, this is the place where the Lamb, where God is going to provide the Lamb on this mountain. In fact it says on that mountain, Moses says, the Lord will provide. It says on that mountain it will be provided. The word in Hebrew can mean provide, will be made manifest, will be seen, will appear. So, and the, here's the amazing thing. It is on that mountain, Mount Moriah, one of the places on that mountain is called Calvary. So Messiah himself was offered up on that mountain where God says it's going to be called Moriah because God is going to offer it up. And he did. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Hope of the World is dedicated to the goal of spreading God's Word and salvation to every land and people. We do this by spreading the word throughout the world and sponsoring compassion projects to the most poor and needy around the earth. To get in touch or have a part in God's work, just write to Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Or go to hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1 that's 1-800-937-4821.